I went out there, um, didn't make it my first couple of years. Still played. There's a, in Philippines, there's a bunch of leagues. Yeah. You, can, you can play League of the Bus. That's what they call it. They were, yeah. you, know, you, you play sometimes outdoor courts, sometimes in the province, indoor courts, and there are leagues that you get paid, you get paid okay. for playing. Wow. So I did that. That kept me going um, for about three or four years. I got into the League of Filipinas, yeah. um, and I played with uh, Laguna Stallions mm -hmm. for one season. Um, that was a good league. It was a traveling league, yeah. but, I mean, in the Philippines, nothing holds close to the PBA. Yeah. So, you know, before League of Filipinas, there was NBA, too. Yeah. Uh, traveling league, too. You go to provinces. You go to different cities. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like the NBA style, but, again, that folded. League of Filipinas folded. Uh, while I was in the League of Filipinas, too, I did go to this. There's a, by TV5, they had a My MVP Pinoy basketball show. It's a reality oh, wow. show of, of just making a team. Yeah. So that was a pretty good, like, cool experience. Um, met a lot of guys there. Yeah. The coaches were PBA coaches. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are, are college coaches. Pretty much, they went around the, the Philippines having tryouts throughout all the different provinces. Uh, they brought back around 2,000 um, participants to Manila. I actually had a, a tournament in Cebu with my Laguna team. And I told my coach, I go, you know what? I was invited to this tryout. I'm leaving. Like, wow. can I get my plane ticket yeah. <laughs> and change my plane ticket? I'll pay whatever I have to pay yeah. to go to this tryout. Yeah. So I left uh, Cebu like probably 5 a.m. I arrived in Manila like 6, 6.30. Took a bus with two luggages straight to the, to the tryout for wow. my MVP. Uh, from there, they took 60 of us. Yeah. And we went to a training camp out in um, Clark Pampanga. Yeah. We were there for five, four or five days, and they slowly cut, cut guys. And then to a point where we came back to Manila with 20 guys, yeah. cut it down to 15, cut it down to 12, then cut it to 10. And that was the 10 team. That was yeah. the 10 players who would play in the games against the PBA legends. We played Burger King, which is a PBL team at the time. And yeah. we played a League of Filipinas team, Ilocos. Yeah. So we played those three teams, and we played their legends twice. Yeah. Um, it's a very cool experience. Got to play against like Ronnie Maxanok. Um, I actually played with Coach Ronnie a lot. Yeah. Um, I played with uh, Benji, Benji, Benji Paras. Yeah. Um, got to play with him a lot when I was out there too, so it was cool. Even played with Kobe when he was, I didn't even know he was Kobe he was at the Kobe time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's cool. It's actually right yeah. before I left, I played against both the brothers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we played against them. We, we actually went undefeated with that, with that team. Yeah. Promised to become a PBL team or a League of Filipinas team. Yeah. It didn't pan didn't out, so that was like my fourth, fifth year, fourth year, I would say. Went to the PBA draft, um, applied for the draft. Yeah. When I applied, everything was all good. Right before the draft camp, I got noticed that I was not Pinoy enough. Oh, Born and raised here. What you were missing? My mom was yeah. my mom died Filipino, but yeah. they said I needed some papers. I had a Philippine passport too, which wow. I still today can't wrap my head around why I couldn't get in. Oh, wow. So I waited another full year. Um, still grinding. At the time, I started, I was always a trainer in, in university. I graduated yeah. a kin degree. Yeah. So I just kept doing training out there. And I was actually working with some of the top um, high schools there. With, so I was doing yeah. fitness training and also skills training with some kids, kids. with the high school kids. Yeah. Um, and then my second, second year came around, applied yeah. early. Like from the time they said, apply in June, boom, put it in. August is the rookie camp. I did the all rookie camp, um, did pretty well. I was actually with the camp the first set of gilas was there. So oh, wow. they were a part of it. Yeah. They did not do any drill. They weren't even present at the drills. They at the just... scrimmaging, they were there in the stand just watching. Yeah. They were guaranteed to go, you know, 1 to 12, their whole yeah. team, or 1 to 15. Wow. At the time, I believe there was eight teams. Yeah. So how it works is pretty much it's as many rounds until the teams say pass. Yeah. So, um, so at the time, I, I did really well with the camp. Um, made it right on time, man. And they said I was okay. They said my papers were okay. Um, I did the first day of all the testing. It was good. Yeah. I did the second day on the Friday of all the games. And after that, after that they called three of us. Uh, one other guy was actually from Toronto, Chris Pistano. Yeah. Um, and another guy from New York. And they said, you guys are missing papers. And I was wow. just... Wow. That just kind of blew me away. I was just like... You guys are telling me now, I, I submitted my stuff in June. Wow. You couldn't tell me that then. Did so they, they tell us on a Friday afternoon, Saturday, Sunday, there are no offices open. In the Philippines, the government, government offices yeah. closed. So it was kind of like I, had, I tried to do my best on that Friday afternoon. went straight to the DFA. Yeah. Uh, went all these, tried to call all the people I know. 
offered as much you know money without being yeah. crazy you yeah. know, broke after yeah um, and I just couldn't get the paper and so I was ineligible for the draft so that was two years in a row um, at the time I was you know I, I would check mock drafts and all yeah. that kind of stuff because they do have that kind of stuff which is cool yeah and I was you know I, in the in the stands I was I was told that Alaska was asking about me yeah. and one of the coaches coach Eric Del Rosario I'm yeah. uh, oh, sorry, Richard Del Rosario. Yeah. Um, he was actually one of the coaches for my MVP, and he always he actually wanted me to play in his school team at the time, but I was too old. Yeah. So there were a couple, and I was supposed to go in the late second to third round um, from these mock drafts that I see. Yeah. But it's just heartbreaking, and up to now it still haunts me. To be honest, there's days where I, I'm not sleepy, check on my phone, and yeah. it's just kind of like, yeah. What a wish, great story. What, what could have happened? <laughs> I mean, what a story. What a story. Yeah. What a story. I mean, so, we, we went overboard, but it was yeah, a story sorry, that it, I felt no like worries, we felt like man. that was needed to hear because yeah. a lot of our fans, that are people that watch our show, are kids that you know that have hoop dreams that you yeah, know are thinking of sure. playing in the Philippines. But if we had to summarize in terms of your advice um, to kids that are playing, what would uh, that wants to play in the Philippines or if you want to play pro? What would be your advice to them? Maybe a couple, one or two advice that you'd like to um, give. For the Philippines, I think exposure to going home to the Philippines is key. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough that I could, I, at my home, I ate Filipino food. I spoke yeah. Tagalog. Yeah. My parents spoke Tagalog to me. I know a lot of people who went there that could not just handle that, that culture, that the culture, culture change. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how much people went home just because of that. So I think getting exposure to the Philippines and actually seeing if that's something you want to do. Yeah. Second is, um, on top of getting exposure, just you have to have the willingness to, to stay and commit. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think, and I was one of them at first, I thought, I'd go there, I've been playing against non-Filipinos here, why can't I go home and play against Filipinos and dominate? Exactly. Um, it's not like that. Yeah. They're, they're really good out there. Yeah. Uh, they, and they're hungrier than us here. That's 100%. That's sure. what everybody says they're that comes hungrier. to our show. They tell us people that are hungrier, they want it more. And, and what, a, what a great story in terms of your experience and advice. I mean, kids that want to play. Take his advice. Take the advice of people that come here that tells us about you know mm -hmm. their their experience because they're mean and this is from their heart. This is from their experience.